Hi and welcome to another Yin Yoga Flow. Today I have named this class Layback Flow. It's a, like a chill way of practicing and we're going to be on our backs. So try to find a position that if you need to see the screen, you don't have to move much or you're not too uncomfortable. Um, I would try to guide you um, as best as I can with my voice, but sometimes we want to see the screen and see if we're uh, following the instructions and, or we are doing what we actually understood. So we're gonna start the class coming down on your back. Again, I have the timer here, so we will be holding poses for about one or two minutes, depending on the poses. I, I want to give this option of being on the back because not all the time we can be seated for a very particular reason. Or if you are a teacher, you may have students who are struggling with something. So this is also a good option of practicing in, or maybe you are just shutting down for the day. You are probably in bed already and you can practice this to decompress. So we're gonna come to pentacle pose, which is similar than Shavasana, but you will open your legs uh, a little bit wider and your arms align with your shoulder in a T position. Sometimes I actually like to bring them a little bit higher. So choose the variation that works for you. We won't need any prop for this flow since we are going to be resting our body weight on the floor. So let's see how it goes. Close your eyes. Take this few moments in this pose to melt down to let go of everything that has happened till now, letting go of any expectation, observing your breath, see if you're using the same amount of time to inhale and exhale. And if not, just try to even up, trying to have a steady, calm breath that hopefully will help us to have a steady, calm mind. A few more seconds to go in the first pose, which is a very resting pose. I have used this pose instead of Shavasana in previous classes. It just give a different feeling to different parts of the body. Try to feel your body getting heavier, more grounded, preparing for the practice that is coming. I'm guessing that we'll be here about a little less than 30 minutes. Very gently, we're gonna start coming to the next pose. So bring your legs together flexing your knees. We're gonna start sending the legs up to the sky. Your hands can rest on your belly and your chest or they can be next to your hips. And just keeping your legs up in the air. This is called waterfall. We have many variations of this pose. You can practice it against a wall or uh, sometimes we had also practice with a bolster supporting our pelvis. But today is a simple waterfall where we hold the legs up high. This mild inversion will help the blood, the energy, the circulation to move in a better, easier way back to the heart. It's a great pose to practice when you are um, finishing your day, probably going to sleep, or you have been very active, walking around, standing a lot, and your legs feel heavy and loaded. So see how probably by now your legs start feeling a little bit different. I can actually feel 
my toes, my feet a little lighter. A few more moments in this pose. Always keeping your eyes closed. Once you have found the pose, perhaps keeping your eyes closed to keep your energy inwards. Good. Two minutes are gone. So we're gonna start flexing the left knee and then we're gonna bring the right ankle on top of your left thigh. So options here for these out of the needle. So we can place the left foot down to the floor and just stay here with your left foot on the floor, your right foot on top of your left knee and just stay here, option one. Option two, you can um, grasp your hands behind your left thigh. Option three, you can actually interlock your fingers in front of your left shin. So choose the variation. I will start the timer here. Choose the variation that works for you. We will be here about two minutes. But wherever you are, make sure that your torso, your head are resting on the floor. Remember, everything that we're going to do in this flow, we will be on our backs. So we will be moving only our limbs to come into different shapes. Closing your eyes, allowing gravity to make your arms and your left leg heavier and heavier while you experience a nice stretch on your right side, your right glutes, the hamstrings, the lateral muscles of your hip. Going back to your breath, observing what the breath does to your body, how your body moves how deep and slow and steady your breathing is. Allowing time to move the stress deeper and deeper so the body can open up, can open up in different areas. Starting with the muscles, the fascia, the joints giving us a little bit more space. Just a few more moments in this eye of the needle before moving into our next pose. Okay, so gently we're going to release the left leg if you were holding your left leg and let the left leg go all the way down to the floor, but you keep your right knee against your chest. One minute here in this folded pose, the asymmetrical version of knees to the chest or folded pose. Allow your left leg to be soft, so we're not holding anything, just allow the left foot drop out or in, depending on what is happening in your structure. And just keep a nice hug to your right shin, bringing your right thigh close to your torso. Again, not, there's, it's not needed to push actively. Just allow the gravity to pull your leg against your chest. Shorter time here, just to transition to the other side. Today, working with our legs, our hips, in a different way. Usually we do this in seated positions. Good one minute is gone. So what we will do now is we're gonna place the right foot on the floor. And we're gonna repeat on the other side. So we're gonna bring the left um, ankle on top of the right thigh. And again, options to stay here, just allowing your knee to be heavy, going down to the floor, or hug your thigh, or bring your um, fingers in front of your 
machine, two minutes in any variation of out of the needle. A very good pose to lengthen and stretch the upper part of your hamstrings, your glutes, and especially the lateral side of your hips. We are doing external rotation, abduction, and flexion here. So out of the needle can be a modification for many other poses that we normally practice when we are seated, like swan pose or square or in preparation for lotus when you practice in, in a more yang way. Anyway, I will allow you to be in silence for a while, closing your eyes, feeling how the gravity takes you deeper into the pose. few more seconds to go, observing any sensation around that area that we're targeting, the hip joint, the glutes, the hamstrings. And mindfully, gently, slowly, we're going to let go if you were holding your right leg, allowing the right leg to keep going all the way down, keeping your left knee against your chest softly mindfully coming into this asymmetrical version of um, knees to the chest or folded pose one minute here holding your left shin with your hands resting your shoulders your head your neck soft on the floor The beauty of yin is that we have time, time to be in the poses, time to transition into the poses, time to come out and observe and feel, time for gravity to do its work, respecting the edges of the body, of the nervous system, of the fascia and the muscles. I always remind my students that the first element that is going to stop you from going deeper into poses is your nervous system is going to protect us so he will stop us before our physical boundaries by holding poses for longer we retrain the nervous system kind of like saying to our brain it's okay what we're doing we know what we're doing Good, so now we're gonna bring the other knee to meet the left. We're gonna hug both knees to the chest, just for a few moments. Paying attention and how different the left and the right legs uh, feel from one another. Using the weight of our arms around our legs, our shins to become heavier and heavier. before moving into the next pose. So for happy baby, we're gonna extend the knees, bringing our feet up to the air, and we're gonna um, choose how we're gonna hold our feet. Either you can choose to hold your feet from the inside or from the outside. Basically what changes is um, the movement in your shoulders. In one, we will do uh, an internal rotation, and the other one will go more into the external rotation. In my body, it feels more effective to hold my feet from the outside, but sometimes I practice 
holding it from the inside also to give a different way of moving. So here again, the arms are just hanging heavy. We are, I'm not actively trying to pull my feet down, but they are hanging heavy and heavier and heavier, allowing the shoulders to keep moving towards the floor, even though if your sacrum is lifting from the floor, that's perfect, that's fine. We give a nice stretch also to the upper fibers of the glutes, the lower section of the spine. Try to find the stillness. Observing what this asana is doing to your body, I can tell you what I am feeling, but I cannot tell you what you should feel. We are targeting the hips and the lower portion of the back. I feel expansion in that area, but also in the adductors. Place your attention on your hips, allowing that part of your body to melt down. This is a great pose to release tension in the lower back, especially when we have been seated for uh, long periods of time. Great to practice before going to bed. But that doesn't mean that you cannot practice it at any time. It's just because it has this decompressing effect. I enjoy to practice this pose before going to sleep. Awesome. Let's see the timer because honestly I can stay here for, oh, actually we have been here for three minutes. There you go. Good that I check, awesome. So very gently and slowly we come out of the pose and we're gonna start bringing your feet together coming into reclined butterfly, so uh, your feet are together, allowing the knees to drop down on the floor. The closer you keep your feet to your body, the greater the stress on your groin, the farther away, the lesser. Um, neither is better or worse, it's just different. So choose how close you wanna keep your feet. Your hands can rest on your belly or they can rest on your side. Two minutes here. Let me just be aware of the time because um, I'm getting into this yin song. This will be the last um, pose of this short practice that, as I said, you can uh, practice at any time. Yin, you can practice it at any time. It will bring different benefits depending on the time of the day, depending on what you have been doing. But it's a great flow, a great practice to do at the end of your day, perhaps before going to bed, before um, falling asleep, even on your bed. As you saw, we don't need anything. Um, we just need to move our legs in different directions. So <sighs> allow your knees to be heavy. Observing how your hip, inside the medial part of your hip, the groin and the adductors get some stretch while we compress the lateral side of the hip. Start cultivating this sensation of melting down, sinking heavier and heavier on the mat. and a sensation that we will continue to cultivate towards the Shavasana, which will be 
next and the last pose. Hope you have been practicing with your eyes closed. And very gently, you can use your hands to bring your legs, your knees together towards each other. Perhaps just resting here, observing and feeling how your hips feel. We did majority of the move movements of the hip joint, except extension and adduction but we were externally rotating the hip we were flexing abducting giving a nice stretch to the posterior part compressing the front good so from here allow your legs to go all the way down to the mat coming into a short shavasana if you're practicing this when you're getting ready to sleep but you have more time you can decide to perhaps practice a longer shavasana but i will stay here with you for just a couple minutes then i will invite you to come out but again as i always said if you are practicing this with time please stay in the shavasana for a bit longer if you want Always a good idea to be in this pose, absorbing what we have experienced throughout the practice. Keeping your eyes closed, your face soft, your body heavy, relaxed, melting down on the floor. if you need to come out so i'll invite you to start wiggling your toes and your fingers start bringing movement little movements back to your body especially because we have been in this position for a while perhaps extending your arms above your head and lengthening your legs and flexing your knees, dropping your body to one side, either side. It's just to transition to a comfortable seated position. Be mindful of how fast you come back up. Try to do it slowly. That was great. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'm in this yin zone right now. I hope you are too. So take it easy, take your time to get up and to continue with whatever you have to continue with your day, with your night. Thank you so much for practicing this probably different flow because we were in a different position for the whole uh, practice. But anyway, so I hope to have you back with me in another practice of yin yoga very soon. Thank you. Well done. If you made it this far, your hips might be feeling open, healthy, and loved. 
If so, let me know by clicking the like button below. And also remember that there are many more classes in the hip opening playlist. Go and check them out. Also, after so many years of teaching in yoga teacher training courses, I have learned that when it comes to poses, it's not necessarily how it looks, but how it feels. And for this, I created the Hips and Knees program. If you're ready to have healthy hips that are going to support your knees and forget about that idea of protecting your knees in yoga practice, this program is for you. To have more information and to sign up in this program, click the first link you will find below this video. And if you have any question, any comment, let me know and I will be happy to reply. Thank you and see you very soon on the other side of the screen.